Hi, everyone. Uh, uh, good morning and welcome to today's session on Discover Data Lake House with end-to-end -end lineage. Uh, it is presented by Tao Feng, who is a staff engineer at Databricks, working on data lineage, data discovery, and search-related projects. Tao is co-creator of Amundsen, an open source data discovery and metadata platform project, and a committer uh, and PMC of Apache Airflow. Previously, uh, Tao worked at Lyft, LinkedIn, and Oracle on data infrastructure, tooling, and performance. So uh, let's welcome Tao, and uh, yeah, please, go ahead. Uh, my check, could you hear me? Yeah, okay. So uh, thanks everyone for attending my sessions. So today I'm going to talk about Discovery Data Lake House with end-to-end -end lineage. So here is a product safe harbor statement. I'm going to skip my intro. So here is today's agenda. So I'm going to talk a bit about some of the background informations and then uh, going to do a bit of demos and then come with deep dive. And then lastly, we share some of the roadmaps of lineage. Um, yeah. So what is data lake house? So in, uh, for lake house, so it's the best combination of data lake and data warehouses. It's used open data formats once with one set of data to power different use cases, including data warehouses, BI analytics, streaming, and machine learnings. All of these are governed by one unified layer. It's called UniCatalog. So hopefully you all heard Matei's uh, uh, keynotes about UniCatalog. So UniCatalog is our uni unified governance layer for all the data assets. It provides central governance for data and AIs. It has built-in search and discovery capability. Uh, you also have automated lineage captures. That's what I'm going to focus today. And it has been integrated with all the modern data stack wires, your existing tools. So what is data lineage? So in, in the lay house platforms, there are many different users using the, using the platforms. So they could use notebooks, create, run, uh, using queries, build data, and trigger you with the workflows. So lineage to me is like a graph that connect different data entities within your lay house and check their dependency. It helps you to answer questions like how is this data get generated? Who is using these data? Uh, what are the downstream consumers of these data? So after talk about some of the high-level concepts, let's go through some of the typical use cases at Layhouse. So we, as mentioned, the one set of data to power different use cases for the, within the same platforms. There are different personas involved in these Layhouse platforms. You, you have analysis, data scientists, product managers, compliance engineers, could be data engineers, analytics engineers, or machine learning practitioners using the same platform, but for different use cases. So the first use case is like data discovery. Once a user enter the uh, lay house, enter the layhouse platforms, they want to find the right data to be used. Until they find the right data, they, they could uh, make queries, build dashboards, make data-driven decisions meaningfully. This often involves what, I call, what we call like data consumer personas, so like analysis, data scientists, product managers, machine learning practitioners. Let me walk through an example. Say I'm a new hire uh, data scientist from a ride share company, for example. I want to do some, uh, I want to do some rise analysis. So how should I get started? I found that there's two, two tables named right, both named right, but one is called call.right, one is called call underscore ds.right. Which one I should use? Without, sometimes, without lineage, it's very hard. I often, I need to ask around my teams, ask in Slack, and still may not get the best answers. But with lineage, it's kind of very clear how uh, to do so. For example, the call.right tables has been powered and used by many uh, critical dis uh, business dashboard. While the other one, call underscore ds.right, actually none of the 
dashboard has been using it. It's pretty common. It's like it could be a, the, that's an old table built by some ex-employee, ex ex-data engineers, like that got deprecated. And then later, there's another one that built for some uh, similar uh, business purposes. So with Lineage, I could easily find out of these two, maybe I should start, I should probably should start with the call to arise one. The second use case is what we call like the change management or impact analysis. Often involves like the data producers persona, like data engineers or analytics engineers. It often involves like help the root cause the data quality issues or uh, deprecate columns with downstream usage. Still, let's walk through a few examples. So some analysis, like I mentioned, like the dashboard is being broken. So what, uh, what could be wrong? Without lineage, it's, it's a super manual process. You need to first find the queries that power this dashboard, then find the table has been using, hope, go through all the code, uh, and then figure out what's the, what's the upstream tables, what the sources have been using. It's a super manual process. With lineage, it's, you could immediately tell uh, within a certain scope. It's like, I know what are the upstream uh, branch tables, raw event table, what are the intermediate table, what's the ultimate goal table that power these dashboards. I could just like focus on these few tables to figure out which could be wrong. In this case, it could be just like some source definition has been changing. The next one is like, say I'm a data engineer, I own some, some table, but I'm going to deprecate one deprecate your columns. What are the downstream consumers, not just tables, but also like the artifacts, like workflow, notebooks, this uh, dashboards that depends on this table, or in the, in the or transient depend on these uh, columns. It's, with, with lineage, I could, use, uh, I could easily tell like, all the entity, how it connected. I could just uh, get a list of all the downstream either in the uh, transient dependency or in the uh, immediate dependency, and notify all these users or owners. The third use case is data governance. It often involves like compliance. They have to check, this is one of the most typical use cases, check the PI or any sensitive information in your lay house. Yeah, so this example is like, I, I know this raw uh, bronze table actually have a column, that PIs. What are the, Within my layhouse, which are the tables actually contain PII information as well? So why is lineage importance? From from above, we could tell that you have one using one set of two uh, with one set of two lineage, you could power many different use cases, including compliance, data ops, discoveries. It help you to, for example, check the sensitive how sensitive data is spread across your data lake and how it help you to understand the context, bring trust for your data analytics. And then also help you to do impact analysis, help you to do the change management. So I'm going to play a demos videos on, hopefully it works. One second. Could you, oh, volume. is running with uni catalog. And I have a notebook which attached a cluster which had lineage feature enables. In this notebook, I'm going to do some car cell analysis. We have a bunch of SQLs for data exploration which eventually write to a very new analysis tables. So after, after some ad hoc data explorations, I decided to put this notebook for, for regular jobs. I'm using the Databricks workflow, which I'm going to trigger this uh, jobs daily. You can see I'm putting it here. And I'm going to also create a bunch of dashboards for analysis on these tables. Now let's go to the Lineage Engine Point, which is the Data Explorer. For this revenue analysis tables, you, uh, you, you can see there's a tab called Lineage which currently lineage is a primary preview features. There's two view for lineage, tabular view, and the graph view. Let's start with the graph view. You can see the variable table is coming from a deep analysis table and coming from a car revenue table. 
event, uh, eventually you could find out it come from a bunch of uh, royal car revenue table, including Benz, BMW, etc. So you, for user, you could always like drill down and understand the, the lineage from source to the targets. And if, if you will want to, if you could see the column level lineage, you could do so as well. So for example, go to schema page, click the revenue column. I want to understand which table contribute to the revenue column for the analysis in, in the analysis table. And you can see coming from this deep analysis, click, and eventually you could you could find it's also coming from the car, uh, raw car revenue tables. So let's go back to the lineage tab. You can see that, that besides the data lineage, you could also see the anti lineage. For example, on notebook, I could see the notebook that generate this or produce these tables or what we call upstream of these tables. If there's a notebook that depend on this table, you're showing it the downstream as well. Same for workflows. You can see which job, daily job, right to this table. And lastly, you could also see which dashboard has been reading these tables. Thank you. Yes, so uh, I just played the demo of how it looks like. So let's talk a bit more on uh, deep dive on the lineage. Start with high levels. So, so in short, there's uh, two typical common ways you could write queries. Like once it's through uh, ETL jobs, that, that triggers the same jobs every day, periodic build the same data set for that day partitions. The other could be through ad hoc query. You could use like notebooks or query editors to run ad, any ad hoc queries. All these could send through a cluster or a databricks. You could, in, in, in databricks terms, you could send, all this query you could send through cluster or SQL warehouse endpoints. The query will get analyzed and then the lineage will get extract of all the table level, column level, entity levels, extract out and send through a lineage services that will as, uh, assemble all this column and table level lineage in a near, near real time fashion. And then user, there's two ways to represent this lineage. What user could either use our data explorer, which are one-stop uh, data browsing, uh, data management UI to see all the information for this data. The other is that you could be exposed through some API to integrate your third-party uh, catalog vendors. So what are the, some of the traits or some of the characteristics of our lineage? So it's auto-captured in runtimes. So basically, it's language agnostic. So either you, it, uh, it doesn't matter you use like Spark C codes or Py, PySpark or any, any language that's supported by Spark. It's governed, the permission governs uh, by unique catalogs. And it is near real times, meaning that as soon as you write your queries, the, the lineage should automatically refresh and surface in the UI for end user to consume. Also, user could use our graph representation to visualize the whole end-to-end, -end, both in table level and column level. Let's start with the examples that I mentioned in the demo. So here is a car. So I'm going to do some analysis of a car cell. So after I have a bunch of queries, so I have these lineage views. You can see between different nodes, the edge could be coming from an ad hoc query, could be coming from a notebook, could be coming from job, anything that triggered the, the right query. S same for column level lineages, like you can, for, for revenues, uh, if you want to just understand for a given column side like revenue, how it come uh, generated, you could use the graph view as well. So how to capture the lineage under the hook? So, so let's start with uh, some uh, how the life of a query looks like in Sparks. So user could use like C codes or 
data frames or uh, for example APIs to write any programs. All of these will get compiled and optimized and analyzed through Spark Catalyst in different stages before sent over for executions. So, uh, so, so I'm, uh, I'm going to skip the deep dive for uh, Catalyst. There are many different talks, but I'm going to focus on the lineage parts. So out of this, one of the important uh, with a concept is how it represents the user programs. It's called a tree, tree node framework. There are two very co important concepts uh, related to column level lineage. One is the uh, expressions, like expression means uh, represent a new value, can, how you contribute and based on the input value. The other is attributes, like how you use and represent a column of data set or a column generated by uh, 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 data operations. So in, in our examples, so we write, we have uh, aggregate analysis tables coming from uh, base view, called revenue review, uh, reviews, uh, which generate by uh, another base table called deep analysis. It's got analyzed in a log, uh, tree of logical nodes. The root of the nodes is uh, commands to represent this write or DDL DMLs. So inside, an, Inside the analyze logical plans, you can see each logical each logical nodes have a node names, have input uh, attribute, for uh, input attribute uh, names as well as output attribute names within the whole tree. So to build a column level lineage, we need to walk through the whole tree to associate different attribute the output attribute back to the source attributes. So what are some of the criteria we need, uh, uh, we need to capture lineage? So we need to capture lin uh, uh, the lineage table name with the three layer namespace, which is, uh, which is uh, used in Unicatalog. We need to capture the persistent view and the source table dependency. We want to provide end-to-end -end lineage. The user could drill from view back to the source table, also see the dependency of this source table. We also want to capture column level lineage, say how these target columns, how you map to a bunch of source, source columns. And also, we don't, want to, we don't want to impact the execution when actually uh, uh, capturing the lineage, so shouldn't throw any exceptions during the command. And also, if the command or query doesn't finish successfully, we shouldn't capture it. So sounds easy, right? So, but there's still quite a few challenges, I would say. So there's no, I don't think there's no single existing data to power uh, in, in the industry to support like both table and column levels. So we don't, also in their bricks, we don't have any existing data to validate whether our heuristic or our lineage extractions really works for various like workloads. And there's no, yeah, as mentioned, there's no generic solutions to power all the sub Spark use cases. Also, like there's different Spark versions, so to support the lineage across Spark versions, it's also uh, needs some sort. Yeah. Now let's talk a bit more on the how we capture the entity lineage. So beside data lineage, we also capture entity lineage. Entity we define like all the entity used in within your layhouse. Initially, what what we support is including like notebooks, jobs, or workflows, and DB SQL dashboards. There are two main typical use cases here. One we call like connector or transformers, meaning like a notebook or jobs that consume a bunch of input table and produce output tables. The other is just purely a consumer. So it's like no, in this case, it's like it could be a notebooks or the dashboards only consume the table, and it, but there's, there's no data set produced. It's just like a dashboard or notebooks for user to do any data analysis. So how do we capture anti-lineage? So besides the data lineage when we capture, we also need to capture the different entity that create this lineage. We also not only uh, capture lineage for write queries, we also need to capture lineage for read queries, meaning like, for example, you just select from these tables, we also need to figure out like this is coming from which entities. Also, Databricks is an uh, enterprise platform. So like, all these entities are governed by different ACL. We need to, for user to visualize or see this, this entity, we need to check whether he has the permission or ACL to, to see so. 
Lastly, if you do, you could link back to the NTT page. For example, if it's coming from notebook, you could link from the, uh, our Data Explorer page back to the notebook. Same for jobs or dashboards. So some of more details. So how do we represent entity in a lineage? It's like, lineage is like a graph. Everything, every entity is like a node. And then we check how it get connected. So we need to uniquely identify each entity in the, in the graph. It's including uh, what we use is like you use like entity type plus a unique ID or unique names plus the scope to identify the entity in the lineage graph. There are two type of entity in Databricks plat uh, Lighthouse platforms. One is workspace level entity, meaning like it only available within this workspace. You cannot share across workspace. The other will be account level entities. So if for workspace level entity, we use like the workspace ID plus entity type plus entity ID. For account level entity, like the uh, unit catalog tables, which could be shared across the uh, unit catalog metastore, could be shared across workspace. We use the metastore ID plus the table, or depends on the table or columns to represent it. Second is like, what is the approach to collect lineage? There are many different ways in, uh, I think lineage is pretty hot. It's like there's various companies doing like lineage collections that a few patterns, I'm not sure I list most of them, but here are the three main ones. One is like manually link. What it means is like you put the lineage in a GitHub repo, manually defi static define it. So to describe so how the uh, lineage look like. It may work, but it could easily get stale, and it's definitely not comprehensive. You cannot capture, for example, those ad hoc queries. Uh, yeah, and then you need to kind of keep constantly maintain it. So second is like infer from SQL or uh, SQL parsing. A lot of like, they do like check the audit log, check the SQL query, parsing the SQL and figure it out. So it may also work, but it doesn't work for Spark, I would say. Spark is a language agnostic, support different uh, language API. You cannot use this uh, method for to, uh, to extract the lineage. The third one is like what we, uh, what we use. It's auto capture during the run times. So it support like lang uh, language agnostic, and user doesn't need to do a much setup. You don't need to load a jar, do a lot of like setup yourself. So clunky and ho hopefully it could work, yeah. So, so we just like build in and then auto capture in your query executions. And you did, you know, yeah, and it's correct, and then it's handle multi-language. The third one is like, how do we update lineage? There's different two, two typical approach. One is like, it's a uh, batch updates. It's like, uh, oftentimes you, you want to full, uh, you need to have some crawler to full rebuild the graph, uh, full, uh, full rebuild the lineage graph. It's, it's, it's good, but you have some uh, delayed. For us, we are more, uh, uh, we choose a more near real time way to update. So basically as soon as the query has been finished executions, like we check the lineage and then for this query, check the one level up and one level down and then, and then persist into a lineage graph and service to the end users. We provide timely feedback for end users to see what's going on. So uh, fourth, so what's the, so what's the, permission models for lineage. So we, we leverage, uh, we, we integrate with, uh, we part of the unit catalog, the lineage is uh, lab, uh, has the using, require user to have the right select permissions to see the, to see the table metadata in the lineage graph. So if user doesn't have the, uh, the right select permissions to see, see the table, so in the lineage graph we will hidden will show us a hidden nodes for the, for the lineage graph. And for the, other, for the other entities, like notebook workflow dashboards, you also require user to have the right permissions to, to see so. So here are some of the, I'm going to talk a bit about some of the roadmaps. So, Currently, lineage is private preview, but we soon to be, uh, go, are going to public preview soon. 
So lineage right now is a, in our system is very table centric, meaning like we only see for a given tables what are the what are the upstream, what are the downstreams. But lineage should be context driven, meaning like it could be used in different contexts. In this case, for example, if I'm a job owner or job user, I want to see if the jobs got delayed or have issues. What could be the upstream um, dependency and what's the downstream dependencies will get impacted. It helped like to do those debug and impact analysis. Uh, second is like once we have the actual base access control attack, we could like allow user to do tag propagations. For example, use cases like uh, like what we described previously is like if I have PI columns, like I want to automate instead of manually map each of the columns through lineage that have PI, I could allow user provide option to propagate the tag automatically. Next is what we call file lineage. It's like oftentimes the user first load to your cloud storage a bunch of files before you create the bronze layers. We also want to capture this kind of first small ETL lineage for end user to understand where is this raw uh, bronze layer comes from. Yeah, so next is what we call ML lineage. It's like the lay house is power different persona, including ML practitioners. So we need to check end to end, not just down to data set. We also want to see how it get impact the machine learning uh, work. For example, which features is using which the, the delta tables, what the ML flows are generated by these delta table features, and power which notebooks. So once we have everything, then we could provide an end-to-end -end lineage for the layhouse for discovery, visibility, and, and various use cases from the files, from the first small files all the way down to different entity and check uh, in your layhouse. Thank you. So yeah, we do have Q&As, and uh, uh, for any Q&As, please raise your hand, and I will come and give the mic to you. So yeah. Hi, Tao. Uh, thank you very much for this presentation. Um, you mentioned that uh, there is a provision to do a manual lineage as well as an automated way. Um, is there a way for an uh, you know for us to augment an automatically prepared lineage? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so the question is, like, is there a way to augment the lineage if we don't capture everything, right? Is, yeah, so we have talked about this one. Right now, we haven't uh, put this in our roadmap, but definitely there's a use case. For example, if there's some third party like from coming from Kafka or you're using a uh, Tableau dashboard that we, in, in Databricks platform, we cannot check. We provide API for you to augment it. We have been talking about this one uh, as a potential item in roadmap. But yeah, I, I get your point. Yeah. Hello, Tao. Um, two questions for you. The first one is, uh, how is the lineage data exposed uh, to, is there any plan to expose the lineage data through an API or th through a schema, uh, metadata schema? That's my first question. Second one is, uh, is there any plan or roadmap uh, to consider including more, uh, including the data uh, from other places so that we can have a truly end-to-end, -end, uh, uh, you know, oh, lineage across the system, so for, for people, uh, Could you for repeat companies. the first one? Could not, I cannot hear the first question. My first question was, uh, uh, is there any plan to expose the lineage through an API or through a schema table or something like that? Oh, uh, for the first one, yes. We, we already have some initial APIs uh, for, for third-party vendors, uh, cat, uh, cattle partner to integrate. And then we do have a plan to make it, uh, for example, bulk, uh, bulk API or through a system table. User could kind of query this lineage uh, using, using whatever way to do so. So the second question is like the same for the first one. It's like, uh, is there any plan to integrate with the system outside of Databricks? We talk about this one. If we want to do that, it's through some augmented uh, API like the previous uh, uh, question asked, yeah but we haven't put it in plan yet. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Tao, uh, I have a question is, uh, you want your data to be discovered, right? 
uh, and how do you control the security aspect? Again, lineage and other information or certain columns uh, from being discovered, right? You do want your data to be discovered, but you still want to have some control uh, on how you want to display that. So. Yes, so, so we, as mentioned, Unit, unit Catalog is the one uh, secure governance layer for all the data and AI in Databricks. So it, it allow users to set various permissions on the table levels. So when we surface the lineage, for example, from table A to table B, we require user to have the select permission or related permission to see both table A or table B. Otherwise, they will show us like uh, hidden or mask. For example, I only have table A uh, permissions. I don't have table B. I, could, I only see from table A from a hidden note until he got the permissions or right access to, to, to do so. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Uh, my question is, does it currently support uh, lineage changes, like the historical changes to the lineage, or is there a roadmap for that? Uh, could you repeat your questions? Uh, lineage change and what? Uh, changes to the lineage happens, right? Like table A uh, is, I'm loading the data from table A to table B today, but after one year, maybe table A is not there anymore. So I am referring to a sub new table. So those changes. Yeah, so good questions. So right now, uh, what we did is that we check the, we do a assemble and aggregate lineage across the time windows. Right now we set as a default 30 days, meaning it, because it could happen like a, a ETL job is a weekly jobs or monthly jobs. We want to check those lineage to represent the end user. And we also want to see a more fine grained history in the down the rows. That is also, yeah, we have been discussing. Yeah. Hello, I have a quick question as a follow up with one of the questions. Is it possible to have to take advantage of the lineage without having Unity Catalog implemented? Uh, I, I, uh, right now, lineage is part of the Unity Catalog offering. So you require, because it, uh, it's highly integrated with Unity Catalog, you require, we only check the data set defined in Unity Catalog. We leverage high, the secure model for within Unity Catalog to check the dependency. So you, short answer is it require you to have the Unity Catalog. Okay, I guess. Uh, we could uh, take it offline and then you could stop it. Yeah. Thank you everyone. So.